Hi, this is Scott Trudeau, Solutions Consultant with Adobe Education. I would like to show you today how to make a postcard, and this is a great activity for studying, say, history, and the students are reading about a historic event or a place. They can then create a postcard to integrate some of their technology skills into their course subject matter. So in this case, I'm going to be talking about the Alamo. I'm from Texas, so I'm going to talk about a place that is part of Texas history here. So here you can see the Alamo. We're going to turn this into a postcard. Now, I want to also talk about where you can get some images to use. <clears throat> here is um, if, uh, that where I found the image, and it started off in Creative Commons. Dot, uh, creativecommons.org. And so here from Creative Commons, what you can do is choose to find uh, license works and just make sure these two check boxes are checked to use for commercial purposes and that allow you to modify or adapt and then you can simply choose for example Flickr I want to search Flickr's uh, image database and I want to look for the Alamo and after I type in the Alamo it comes in and finds all these different pictures of the Alamo that I can use inside of my project and then after you find a picture of the Alamo, what you can then do is uh, download it, uh, but do make sure that you um, read the, the license. So in this case, you know, I want to make sure that I mention uh, G. Sloan here and give him kudos for taking this picture. So now I'm going to be back inside Photoshop, and after you've opened the picture, we want to scale it to a nice postcard size. And a nice postcard size is um, six, uh, four by six or six by four. So I'm going to come in here and get my crop tool and I'm going to set up a new preset. So I'll choose a new crop preset. And from here we can just type in six and colon four and click OK. And in that case it told me the preset already exists and that's OK. Uh, if, and if you just build it out then um, obviously obviously it'll be a brand new preset for you so now no matter what you do with the crop tool it's always going to be a four by six base crop I'm going to come in here and grab a little bit of the Texas flag as well I'm going to space this exactly where I need it and once I'm all done I can either hit this checkbox up at the top or hit my enter key to accept the crop so that looks pretty good now what we want to do is add some text um, so this is going to be a, a simple project we're just going to have some image and some text Maybe do some special effects with uh, text. You get my horizontal type tool. Up at the top, you have the options for that tool. In this case, I want to choose a nice thick font. Um, I, and you know what? I'll just choose impact for this. And it's in alphabetic order. You can also click in there and say you wanted times. Uh, you can just start typing and bring that up as well. But in this case, I want to choose that impact font. And then I'll come down. And you can also set your type size if you wish. And I'll just click. And I'm going to type in uh, the album. And it's okay if your type starts running off this point type, if it starts running off the project, because then we can go and get our arrow tool up at the top, which is the move tool. Click on the move tool, and you can simply move this text around. And at any time, too, up at the top in your options, you have the show transform controls checkbox. You can click that checkbox. It brings little bounding uh, handles and you have to have the arrow tool active to do this but it brings the little bounding handles around and you can scale the type by grabbing one of those corner ba uh, bounding handles and just scale that scale that type up so once you're all done you can uh, hit your enter key and in this case I, I actually want to scale this uh, a little bit larger than that so I'll just go ahead and stretch it out to cover a large section of our photograph and once you're all done, we can just hit our inner key. The reason why I wanted to do this, I want to apply a little bit of special effects to the project. It doesn't matter what color your type is because the special effects, we will uh, we'll adjust the color and the gradients and the fills using the special effects. So I'm going to come over here to my layers panel. You can see now I have two layers, the Alamo text layer and the background layer. I'm going to make sure I click on the Alamo layer because that's the layer I want to apply some special effects to. I'm going to come down to where it says FX and click on the FX button. And the FX button will allow us to see uh, very special effects. So I'm going to open up the FX panel. I'm going to drag down my little screen capture tool so you can see this a little bit better. 
We'll go ahead and open that up. And scroll through those. And what we are going to do with this is we're going to add a nice uh, bevel effect. So I'm going to choose bevel and emboss. It opens up our bevel and emboss panel. What I like to do is take this dialog box and kind of move it to the side uh, so I can see both the options in the dialog box and some of the text. So you can see bevel and Bex, bevel and emboss has a little checkbox next to it. And then we can choose to do an inner or outer bevel um, and kind of play around with that. We'll just choose, we can do an emboss as well. We'll just do a, no, we'll say an inner bevel. And then we can chisel it hard. This is, imagine having a hammer and chisel and chiseling the text out of stone. Uh, that's kind of affecting your edges and the way your edges are going to look. I'll choose a smooth in this case. And depth is how much, you know, kind of a 3D type feel do you want. We can make the depth of that bevel a little bit uh, deeper. And of course, you can change the size of the bevel and really go crazy with it. We just want to do a slight little bevel there and then soften it up. I like to think of softening as going over the edges. Uh, so you've chiseled out the text. And then if you want to go over the edges uh, with, say, some sandpaper, that's really what softening is. It's like digital sandpaper. It just kind of rubs the edges and smooths them out. Uh, so it's like going around the corners and the edges of that bevel that you just applied and smoothing that out. Now we can do other things too. So we have our different styles over here to the side and think of all of these as special effects. So I'm going to come over here and apply also a... You know what we'll do a stroke so a stroke is simply an outline around the project so we can apply a stroke and we can adjust the size and then it can just turn into like a big blob around our text I'm just gonna go you know and adjust it to about three or four pixels and you can also change the color so there's this little color swatch down below click on the color swatch opens up you can come through and pick a color this works as a two-step process you get into the shade so say we want some greens get into the green area of the color strip and then you can come in here and choose the color uh, in in this area so first step is choose the color from the color ribbon and then second step is dial in the shade that you wish over on the right hand side in this case I just simply want to keep it black so you can find your color and then when you're all done click OK so now this is looking pretty good we have uh, the Alamo text the Alamo in the background Maybe we want to apply a little bit more special effect to this. Um, what we're going to do is take a look at uh, the opacity and the fill. So here we see the opacity of the layer. And the opacity, if I click on that and drag that little slider down, you can see it affects the entire layer. What I mean by the entire layer is it affects the text and all the special effects we've applied to that as well. I'm going to take that back up. I really didn't want to adjust that. So what is the difference between opacity and fill? Well, fill only adjusts the inside fill of the text but leaves all the effects alone. And this is really cool because it can help us get kind of this cool transparent effect to our text. So now when I adjust this, unlike opacity which adjusts the effects and the text, this is only going to affect the text. And as I lower this, you're gonna see that I have effectively taken out the white but left the bevel and left the stroke uh, effects alone. And then we can move this around wherever we like by simply clicking using our arrow tool, our move tool, and moving this around you get that cool kind of special effect feel to it. At any time you can come in and for example if I'm not sure I like the stroke, I can click on the little eyeball next to stroke, click on the eyeball, that goes away. And that's kind of a cool effect too. You get this kind of neat um, emboss uh, type feel to the text, uh, kind of transparent looking. I can also hide that if I wish. In that case, I just hid both the effects. And there's a little eyeball next to the word effects where if I click that, toggles all the effects that I applied off and on as well. To bring it back, you simply click in that area right next to the effects to push that eyeball back in. So once you're all done with this, of course you can print it, you can send it to the web, print it to PDF, and you have a nice postcard, a nice digital project to add to your studies. So this could be done for multiple things. So whether it's a history project, um, even a math project, I've seen people create uh, postcards about different math formulas or mathematicians or angles. 
um, chemistry assignments where you can build out a little postcard or trading card even uh, that has some chemistry scientific facts on there. So I hope this tutorial was useful. This is Scott Trudeau with Adobe Solutions Consultant in Education. So Happy New Year.